But like in terms of wrestling, dude, think of like how how different maturity wise you are now as a twenty six year old man, and, and how and how, not only not only physically but mentally different. I mean, I mean, talk about that change from when you're tw- just from twenty to twenty six. Yeah, so I'm going to try to talk about this without sounding like I'm hyping myself up too much. But a lot of it is just the confidence that I've gained through working through pe- with people like you, my good friend Garrett Ryan, my other good friend Samson Imanote, like with you, with your Division One experience. And we've talked about it several times. Like, I have no doubt in my mind, had things gone differently for you, you would have been an, an All-American at the very least, you know, with your knowledge and the way you apply it. And I compare it to my friends that – wrestled at Olympic trials that qualified for NCAAs twice, you know, as D1 athletes. I'm like, you are right there with them. And, and to me, like, if you had the chance, you would have accomplished everything that you set out to do. With that said, I think about where I was at the end of my senior year of high school, where I felt pretty confident going against 99% of the people within Arizona. But I also knew very well, and I saw it when other Arizona guys would go out and wrestle people from other states, and they just get mopped. Right. Like a undefeated 160 whatever and oh state champ Roman Bravo Young excluded from this talk right. by the way <laughs> he's <laughs> obviously the outlier right but the majority of kids that were considered studs in Arizona will go out to Fargo or Virginia Beach or wherever and they get absolutely demolished and so I look at that and I think I'm nowhere as good as those kids and they're going out to these national tournaments and they're getting demolished and then they go to college at some D3 and then you never heard it, hear about it ever again and Not that that isn't respectable, not that what they did isn't respectable, but I think about where my mindset was at that time as far as how limiting I was. I'm like, I'm good in Arizona, but yeah, I wouldn't want to wrestle anyone from anywhere else. I get mopped. Then my first experience actually with wrestling somebody from another state came at ADCC trials my first time a few years back. I wrestled a a guy that was a state placer come from California and then wrestled D1 at Cal Poly. We basically had a six-minute wrestling match, and I won at the very end with a takedown. And I look at that, and I'm like, wow. So I took my fifth place medal from high school, went against somebody that was a state placer in California, much tougher than Arizona, and then wrestled D1. And at the time, I would have gotten nothing better than like a D3 or NAIA opportunity, maybe. Right. And so I'm like, okay, maybe there's something to be said about this. And I'd just been doing jujitsu the whole time. Right. So now, after venturing and learning from you, learning from Garrett, learning from Sanson, and then testing myself against legitimate division one athletes that come in or other college wrestlers d2 d3 what have you and i'm getting the upper hand more often than not it's like wow like to to your point maybe i just blossomed at a different time to where things just finally clicked and i'm like you know i'm much better than what i gave myself credit for way back when and i never got to say test it on a collegiate level but i know that whenever i wrestle against somebody with collegiate experience especially somebody that actually did a fair amount of success i can keep up with them right. well and and even you know that through training with me too so it's a testament to my work of course but also the people that i was around like yourself to even show me that it was even possible because a few years back like you said early 20s i would have never thought i'd ever be hanging with people at that caliber or even within a respectable conversation of the matter. Absolutely.